Thank you. Um, so I'll mostly try to introduce the notions that appear in the title, so automorphic representations and relative trace formula. Um, so we start once again with classical modular forms. Uh, these are um, functions on the upper half plane that certify certain uh, transition property under the action of SO2Z and are holomorphic. Um, but we can also talk about mass forms. Uh, these are actual functions on the quotient that are eigenfunctions for the non-Euclidean Laplace operator. And in both two settings, we have a Fourier expansion. So the one on the right is for a mass form, in case some Bessel function. <coughs> and uh, we can, so if A0 zero is 0, it's a cusp form. And in both cases, we can form an L function. And these are, as we saw, uh, important many years of number theory. Um, so I want to show a particular example. It's called Bospuget's period formula. So we take an integer uh, that is negative. Uh, we take ZD to be a solution of a uh, quadratic equation AX squared plus BX plus C, where ABC are integers. And we want discriminant to be D, and we take a solution which lives in the upper half plane. And we take one of these mass forms, and we take a sum over all such solutions for a fixed D modulo SL2Z. So there's a finite number of them. And the square of a module of such a number is related to a central value of the associated L function times central value twisted by a certain character. And uh, so such a formula is important from point of view of analytic number theory and also from point of view of arithmetic of elliptic curves, for example. And um, um, what I do is uh, work on a certain conjecture that generalizes such a formula. So in order to explain how can we generalize such a formula, I need to introduce uh, a different way of talking about such forms in the first place. <coughs> so A is ring of Adele's. G is some reductive algebraic group. It can be GLN or something. And, um, and we, we can take points of G and A. So uh, if you don't know what A is, doesn't wh what matters is that this is still locally compact separable topological group. So we can do analysis on it. We can, we have a in particular, there's Haar measure. And G of Q is a naturally subgroup that sits there as a discrete subgroup. So uh, we look at the associated L2 space, so the functions, normal functions, complex valued functions on this quotient. And we have a natural uh, regular action of GA by right multiplication. And um, we can define a subspace of the functions of that are called cuspidal functions, and so like an analog of vanishing constant term. And then we define a cuspidal automorphic representation. These are abstract, abstract representations of GA together with the embedding into this space of cusp, cusp forms. So using this abstract language, um, cuspidal Hecke eigenforms that we saw correspond to cuspidal automorphic representations of GL2. But we can clearly see that GL2 can be replaced with something else now. Um, so going back to this formula, Vaspouget's formula, how can we see it now? So pi will be cuspidal automorphic representation of GL2. And we take a quadratic extension. Um, so associated to it, we can embed an anisotropic torus into GL2. And then we take an element in this space, and we just integrate it over the torus. And then uh, there should be a module squared. Uh, this is, again, roughly uh, the same value, so central value of L function associated this time to the automorphic representation pi, and times the same thing twisted by a certain character. Yes, it should be squared, yes. Uh, 
Okay. So now we can see that we can replace GL2 by any other group and T by a subgroup. And just consider such a problem. So we call such an <coughs> integral a period. So pi is the cuspid automorphic representation of G. We take a vector in pi and we consider such, a, such an integral and the following questions. Can we characterize pi for which the period is non vanishing? And can we maybe find an explicit formula for p of pi or maybe module of it? And um, so, what I want to talk about is how can we try to approach this problem via harmonic analysis? So, um, what is harmonic analysis in this setting? Uh, so, we start with a compactly supported smooth function on this topological group G A. And it, so by abstract construction, it defines an operator on this L2 space, given by a convolution. But because we are quotienting out by rational points, this is actually an integral operator. And so the kernel K X Y is a sum of a rational points of F X minus one gamma Y. And this operator preserves uh, G-invariant spaces. So if we decompose our L2 into cuspidal part and orthogonal to the cuspidal part, so will the kernel decompose. And furthermore, actually, the cuspidal part decomposes <coughs> into a direct sum of cuspidal representations. And so accordingly, the kernel will decompose. And idea is, so I recall the problem, we want to study this period over a subgroup. So if you note this quotient uh, brackets h, we want to integrate k twice over this h. So uh, why? So k decomposes as cuspidal part and orthogonal part, and furthermore cuspidal part decomposes into this pi component. And so, accordingly, the integrals will decompose. And it's not hard to see that the, the pi component integral is very <coughs> directly related to the period, I mean, especially it will not vanish if and only if the period is not vanishing. So uh, this, this integral should, should, at least uh, in principle, tell us something about this period. Um, as we vary, of course, the function. Uh, so, the, so, the title is relative trace formula. So, what is the formula? The, the point is that K, apart from this, this spectral decomposition into cuspidal part and orthogonal part, has the other formula is just the sum of a rational point. So, there's another way of computing this integral, and this is by stating the quotient g mod h mod h and this this is something we can actually compute and the idea in uh, in this field what we do is is to um, maybe take another group g prime with some other periods over h prime h h uh, second and uh, where the periods are maybe better understood, and somehow compare the, the geometric expansions. So this is a concrete example of a conjecture where this was applied. So for G, we take a product of unitary groups. And for H, is a diagonal embedding of the smaller group. So it's a unitary group of rank n and n plus 1, and we embed diagonally uh, a smaller group. We take cuspidal representation of G, and the conjecture roughly says that the period will non vanish if and only if the central value of L function doesn't vanish. So, this is uh, the base change L function, and uh, even existence of it wasn't uh, really known until recently, thanks to work of Arthur, uh, Gobao Chao, and Mock. 
But uh, now we can formulate this conjecture, and uh, it sort of uh, resembles what uh, Chen Man was talking in the morning in the way that there should be multiplicity one in uh, in Vaughan L packet. So uh, if we look at the condition that L function doesn't vanish, maybe we need to go over some different pi, but it lies in the same packet. And there have also been formulated conjectures that that it, that give precise expressions for the period. So, like in the case of Bas Pouget's formula. So we have such conjectures, but but also Jacques and Rallis propose an approach and attack on this conjecture using relative trace formula. And this has been carried out at least partially. So, Hue Yun proved the fundamental lemma. And Consequently, Wei Zhang proved a substantial part of the conjecture, as well as some additional results by Bizarre Plessis. Uh, however, so what are the, there are some issues with this approach is that I completely ignored the non cospital part. And actually, uh, in general, it doesn't even converge. And uh, moreover, um, the, the orbits, which are not regular semi-simple actually behave badly and it doesn't make much, we cannot re really integrate over them. So, so in a way the, the, the integral we started with is, is not really computable. It's just an idea. And then, so we cannot use all functions. We need to restrict the scope of functions we're using and this uh, entails uh, restrictions on the result of of previous sort of Wei Zhang and so on. So in my PhD thesis, I tried to make sense of, of these expressions for all possible kernels. And uh, so I, I, I defined extensions. I, def I, defined, I defined these integrals that are regularized those integrals and obtained some distributions. And so uh, following work with uh, Pierre Chaudoir, uh, we um, extended transfer to all functions. So fundamental lemma and transfer is known for uh, regular semi-simple orbits. was known. Now we extended it to all orbits, even those bad orbits where a priori we couldn't integrate over. So uh, now uh, basically the geometric part is, is, is complete. And what's left to do is get a hold of. So I can define now this, this integral, but we need a more refined uh, expansion of this. Uh, we need to understand it spectrally, what it means in order to uh, extend results of Wei Zhang on towards the uh, gross conjecture. So this is a project I'm working on uh, currently, but uh, I also like to think about other types of periods and the relations to relative trace formula. OK, thank you. <coughs>